Here we have a motion problem in which we have a vehicle that is starting from rest, accelerating at a, at a rate that is given to us, um, in a straight line until it reaches a speed of 20 meters per second, and then after that the vehicle will start slowing down at another constant acceleration, this time of 1 meters per second squared. Now notice that for both accelerations, uh, the accelerations are given as constant. This means that we will get to use our kinematics equations, our equations for constant acceleration, to solve this problem. Part A is first asking us about the time, so let's begin by making note of our givens. So we are given to us the initial velocity of the vehicle in both cases, because we're told that the vehicle will start at rest. So we have the initial velocity always. We also have the final velocity. We know what it's accelerating to, 20 meters per second. And for both parts, uh, we're given the acceleration. So v naught, the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the acceleration are all given to us. And in part A, we want to find the time. So let's first remind ourselves of what the, the three main kinematics equations are. And here they are to the side in this box here. Now to find the time, I think the best equation to start with would be this first one right here, because it has all three of our givens, and it has time. So we'll want to solve this equation for time, and then use the values given to us by the problem to find, find what the time is. We can begin solving this equation for time by subtracting v naught from both sides of the equation, like this. And now to get the t on its own, let's divide both sides of the equation by acceleration, like so. Now we can begin solving for time, but keep in mind that this problem is a little, a little interesting because there are two parts to it. There's the acceleration for when the car is speeding up, and the other acceleration for when the car is slowing down. So I'll use two variables for t here. I'll say t1 is the variable for when the car is speeding up, and then I'll define t2 to be the variable for when the car is slowing down. Then we'll add the two t's together to get the total time for the car's motion. In the case of t1, the car's final velocity is the 20 meters per second for when it's reached its full speed, and then its initial speed is zero, since it mentions that the problem mentions that the car starts at rest. Its acceleration for this time will be 2.0 meters per second squared, as given to us by the problem. If we solve this, either plugging it into our calculator or by just reading it, we find that this time is 10 seconds. Now for t2. This time our final velocity is zero, since it's driving down to rest, it's slowing down to rest, and 20 meters per second is our initial speed. Our acceleration is going to be 1.0 meters per second, as stated by the problem, but I'm going to make this negative, since it's accelerating in an opposite direction to the other acceleration. They're both going in opposite, both accelerations are directed in opposite directions, so it's important to have at least one of them negative to show the, the opposition there. If we put this into our calculator, or, or just look at it, we find that this time is 20 seconds. So, it takes 10 seconds for the car to speed up, and 20 seconds for the car to slow down. If we add these together, then we get 30 seconds. So this is the total amount of time that it takes for the car to move. Part B is now asking us about the distance that the vehicle travels. Technically, we could use any of the equations now, since we're only missing one variable, but I'll go with the third one anyway. I'll go with this one because since it doesn't mention time, you could technically solve part B first using this one before solving part A. Once again, we'll first want to rewrite this equation to solve it for the distance, since that's what we want to find. So let's first subtract both sides of the equation by v naught squared to get the term containing the displacement on its own. And now let's divide both sides of this equation by 2a to get the delta x on its own. Now because there are two parts for this, we'll do what we did for part a with the times and then split it up into two different variables. So I'll say x1 is going to be when the car is speeding up. 
So the final velocity is, of course, 20 meters per second, and that's going to be squared. And then the initial velocity is, again, 0, so it's just 0 squared. You don't even have to write that term if you don't want to. And then it's going to be 2 times the acceleration, which for that part of the motion is going to be 2.0 meters per second squared, as given to us by the problem. If you plug this into our calculator, we find a distance of 100 meters. Now let's do this for the part where the car is slowing down, so delta x2. This time, 0 is the final uh, velocity, since it comes down to rest. And then 20 meters per second is the initial velocity. So that's going to be the part that we square. And then the acceleration at the bottom is again going to be negative 1.0 meters per second squared. If we plug this into our calculator, we get a distance of 200 meters. So just like we did for part, uh, for part A of this problem, we're going to add those two distances together to get 300 meters. So that means that throughout the entire motion described by the problem, the car traveled a total of 300 meters. So that is our solution to both Part A and Part B. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the, uh, down below. If you'd like to make requests for future problems for me to do, I've got a Discord server linked in the description, so please check that out. And I've got uh, an email link where you can message me if you'd like to request a problem or if you'd like to talk about um, other things you'd like to suggest. So that's all for this video. I hope you all have a good day or a good night, depending on what time it is.